Hey guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Today we're going to look at Ethereum new price targets I've got in mind after we have smashed through our previous levels 2.5k, 3k, 3.5k. Now we're well and truly over 4k, but we need to see some sort of correction. So we're going to look at that on the chart as well before we hit these targets. So these are price points to keep in mind. One would say maybe price predictions. So keep that in mind as we go through the charts. I'm also going to look at some of the news, update that. We've got a lot of stuff on Bitcoin and we'll look at Cardano price as well as probably a few other cryptos that we'll check out on the charts. So make sure you like the video up. It goes a long way to helping out the channel. Subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon, follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Let's get started. Let's check out the crypto market capitalization. So we start here to give us an idea of what's going on with the majors. And so we can figure out what is happening with the miners. So the smaller altcoins. Now we've got Bitcoin at 40% dominance, ETH at 20% dominance, which means ETH is now 50% of Bitcoin's value. I posted about that on Twitter just a few hours ago. So check this out as well. And the other cryptos which we're interested in today are Cardano, which has had a pretty big surge on the back of some Tesla speculation. Everything is speculation in this market and really heavy speculation. People will even make up stories and try and pin two and two together to give us some sort of reasoning behind this. And that's why we have such a an emotional fueled bull market at the moment. Now I've got some big stuff that I'm doing on Bitcoin as well. So make sure you stick around on the channel. I've got some updates on pricing and forecasts that I'll add into a future video. Uh, but today I really want to just focus on the majors and that's going to give us an idea of what's going on with altcoin season as I have posted about this today on Twitter. So as I said, if you haven't followed, be sure to do that. Uniswap has been doing very well today, uh, 10%, but Polkadot is the real player here, 22% in the last 24 hours. It's really getting a kick on and I think that is part of the narrative shifting into uh, the smart contract space again. We've seen it with Cardano, obviously Ethereum has been going well, time for Polkadot. This is the ratio gang, 50.22%. We hit that 8% of Bitcoin value. What does all this mean? It's just more bullish news for Ethereum. And as the steamroller comes, as we gain more speed and momentum, these sorts of narratives will continue to play into Ethereum uh, going bonkers, basically going up a hell of a lot. But there will come retracements and this will just scare people out. This is like when the market drops 8%. We're 8% off our all-time high. So these are the sort of things to look out for in amongst the big picture move that Ethereum is doing. Turning our attention to the fear and greed index, we're at 27. Massive fear. But I think Bitcoin is about to have a turnaround. Now I'll show you the rule on the chart as well. This is what helped me with the rule to pin the top on Bitcoin. Videos on the channel, 18th of April, we got that nice drop from that top. And so that helped me. This is GAN analysis. It's all in his rules, but it takes a bit of time to study and apply it to the market. It's not used on every single signal. You have to know the rules, but I'll show you that in just a moment. So fear 27, we know this historically is a good time to be buying the lows. Not saying that it is the low because it can come back down after a slight rally. Onto a little news before we hit the charts up. US inflation is up 4.2%, but Bitcoin is still down. I think this is shows that we don't need to follow the narrative that inflation is here and inflation is going to rise, uh, make all of the commodities rise at the one hit. It doesn't have to go in a straight line. So every time you hear a news story about inflation coming, more money printing, well, there's more money out there, which means all of the commodities should be increasing. It doesn't need to happen in a straight line. So just because the news is saying something doesn't mean it's going to happen in the charts. Just pay attention to that because it is a very prominent narrative that goes on in the markets and you sort of think of it like well why is inflation going up we have this news of inflation now the drop market's dropping it doesn't matter it just plays into the whole narrative longer term and like i said looking at the cycle i'm expecting property and stocks to be going up into around 2026 based on the 18.6 year cycle developed by phil anderson so want to know more Stick around on the channel. I've got some videos coming up on that as well. Tether publishes reserve breakdown for the first time. So we were told in 2017 to look out for Tether crashing and not having our money back. That prevented a lot of people from taking profits in Tether and losing out to the 80, 90% losses in the crypto market. 
Now, Tether has come out and shown on their books that they hold 70% of the company's reserves are held in cash and cash equivalent, short-term deposits and commercial paper. They have the breakdown of the rest of it as well. So most of it's in those cash and the, the, uh, the assets that I just mentioned. Uh, but then you can see further details um, further down here as to what they are holding. This one shows the fiduciary share was 24%, treasury bills 3%, Reverse repo notes had a 3.6% share and actual cash represented 3.87. Basically keep note that these stable coins are doing a little better than we are led to believe. Now I'm not siding for the stable coins here and yes, Tether's had a pretty different sort of past out there, but I look back now thinking it would have been better to hold USDT because that was the only option at the time, essentially the only option rather than holding it in cryptos or throwing it into ICOs, you'd be better off holding that and holding it for the bull market. So they, this fear will come back at the next cycle. Now let's turn our attention to the charts. I'll start with Ethereum. We're getting close to our time prediction, our time point. Now this is just a rough guide. These are always roadmaps. When we're in trading, we should not be looking at exact numbers in terms of time and price. The legends never did this. Gan, Wyckoff, they weren't looking for exact price points to get out on. They just have it as a rough guide, as a roadmap. And so it makes for a good title to talk specifically about a, a price point and we can have targets, but we have to know that it doesn't have to reach that target on the dollar to get us there. Case in point, we have the 12th of May, just a few bucks short of our 261% at 4441, so $4,441. We hit 4,384 before we had a reversal and then a solid volume buyback at the bottom here. So we had a crash into the low and we've bounced back from that at the moment. So it doesn't have to hit that exact dollar. Now, Ethereum is looking pretty strong overall and I have a few measures here. We've We've used this range, which is a strong range uh, leading up into the all-time high and then the slight breakout before we had a, I believe it was a 36% correction. Now that's led us to 2.618 at the 4,000 level. My next target above this level, if I take it off log, we're looking at around $6,400. And that is the next fib from the low. So it's the solid lines here from the low to the top and then projected another 61.8 percent that's a fib number that's why we're using 61.8 percent that's at around 6300 dollars and the 400 percent of the dotted lines so that's this range back here which has had very good hits on on the uh on the market on the prices that's coming in at around $6,500. And so somewhere in the in the middle is about a $6,400 ETH. So that's why I'm using those as a rough guide. Uh, further on, 7,500 and 8,000 give us our next targets. Now, if we take this one off because we've used that already and we've hit a solid target there, this is what I'm looking for here. Well, we should hit those targets eventually, but I suspect we'll get a pullback. This is going to be very challenging because this low looks pretty solid to me. This is at 3530 because of the massive volume and then the uh, the previous the following day has risen now if we get a breakdown of this level looking at around a 36 percent drop that's going to lead us to about twenty eight hundred dollars which lines up perfectly well with our 50 percent level which is also a great number i'm using 36 percent because we have seen 36 percent play out on the last two ranges down. So I've got 36% drop here into the massive volume, put on log and you can see better. That's a 36% drop and that was a fantastic buy opportunity. And then the next 36% drop was also a fantastic buy opportunity at $1,300. Also on big volume as well before we took off. So if we were happy to get another $3,600 from this high, it's going to take us to around $2,800. I know it's a, it's a huge way down from where we are. But in terms of percentage, it's the same thing we've seen before in February and also in uh, August into September. And so that may set us up for the move into 
the six and a half thousand dollars, the sixty four hundred dollars, and then further on as well into the eights and nine thousands. So that's what I'm talking about, uh, where we need to have some sort of pullback to shoot us on further. But if we have a small pullback, it's still possible. It's on shakier ground in that terms. Turning our attention to Bitcoin once again. Now this is the rule that I'm looking at here. So the first time was the eighteenth of April. We had our three day down rule. One day, two days, three days. Now we're using white bars. You guys have been following a while, understand why we're cutting the noise out. We don't need all of the color for what we are doing here. This is just what the default is and people just apply themselves to the default. If you wanna be a default person, use the colored candles. Otherwise, some white bars cut the noise out and you can start to see patterns a little clearer. This one here is three closes at the same level doesn't always work. None of these rules are 100%. Keep that in mind, but we just got to use them at the right times. Now we've had a low, we've had a lower low than we have seen previously, which was on the 25th of April. And this is the lowest price range that we have seen in over two months. So this is why I'm using this level now. So we got three closes at a similar level. So this is at 49,300, 49,700, 49,900. Generally after the third close, we'll see a higher high. So we've got these two highs here at 51. I suspect we'll come back to test the 53K level. If we don't, this is a further bullish sign. Maybe we'll come back and uh, retest these lows back here at about 47. But uh, after that, I suspect we will come up and test these lows because we need to keep testing the market to see where we sit overall. That's what the markets do. They wanna know, are we ready to shoot up or are we going to continue to be stagnant and hold our ground or potentially fall until we find bigger support that's all the markets are doing time after time so uh, yeah from this point because we've had such a big fall we saw the fear and greed at 27 which historically has been a reasonable time to buy up again see on the 26th we had a fear and greed at 27 and we go back to the chart what happened on the 26th the day after boom it shot up so that's another reason as well why I suspect we will shoot up to around that 40, uh, sorry, the 52 to 53K in the short term, establish a level, head higher, or fail at that level and head down. This is the safe zone for the alts to continue doing what they're doing, to, to take off and shoot up and see those big gains that we've been looking at on Polkadot and on Cardano. So let's take a look at Cardano now. $2.16, so we've, gone up yet again after our fantastic call again on the 5th of May where we had the breakout. This was another GAN rule, fourth time through, break the highs and we are solid to go. This was a day that scared everyone on the 13th and remember what we we're talking about on the 13th, massive, massive volume. You have not seen this volume since the previous spike and previous low and now this volume has closed higher. Exactly what we talked about on that day, we had the highest close we had in our history of Cardano and now we're heading up again on on, uh, on ADA. So that was another good buying opportunity, holding its ground above the highs, so using the highs as support. So the $1.60 area was great support, now we're at $2.16. Uh, ADA, ETH also heading up, ADA BTC, more, I wouldn't say they're not all-time highs, but they're recent highs, very, very solid, taking out a high from 2018. Keep that in mind of how strong this market is at the moment. Now, the next levels are about that 5,000 point where I've got the horizontal, being that they were lows in January 2018. Then we head for the six sixes and beyond. So ADA, BTC is looking far stronger than ETH, which tells me ETH is still far stronger than Bitcoin for now. ADA DOT, again, pretty good, but DOT has come back from this and it's pushed ADA down. The last one we wanna have a look at is DOT. DOT has had massive gains. New all-time highs against the dollar, but I need to see a close above here. We haven't seen that close yet, but yesterday was a very good day to get us into those, those high levels and have our highest close ever on DOT. So that's good signs. DOT ETH tearing it, tearing it a new one, heading up again from these big lows. And I would say that we've probably seen a low on DOT ETH now, especially after this big volume day on OKX. So it's a you know, we don't have the best data on .eth, but at least we've seen a reasonable low here and we've shot up for several days straight. .btc, new all-time highs. This is old data from old dot, so forget that. This is the new dot that we want. We saw this breakout here, talked about this with the group, uh, the, the investor accelerator, so check out the group. Link is to 
a link to the Investor Accelerators down below in the description. And you can also, if you don't want to join that just yet, there is a free newsletter that you can join, update you with crypto, stocks, property market, economic cycles, finance in general, so you can get a feel of the markets and how they're all interconnected. Link to that is down below. Just free email, once a fortnight, drop your email address down there, nothing more to it. Dot BTC strong. So this is why we have them all in our portfolio as well. And keep a mixture of them because sometimes DOT is losing heavily against ADA and sometimes it's ripping against Bitcoin. So overall, our Bitcoin value is heading up. Don't forget to take profits this time. Don't forget. This could skyrocket, but it, how do you feel if the, if it skyrocketed and you didn't take profits, you let the market slip against you and you basically end up with less Bitcoin than you had at the as the market skyrocketed. Ask yourself those questions. Solana Bitcoin is setting up again. I'm not convinced just yet, but we are getting higher lows. That's a very, very good start. Solana USD, probably not too bad either. I can't really see this going a hell of a lot lower and don't see it really heading into the, the 20s at this stage. Uh, this is the 50% level. So yeah, I'm just not sure what, how much further this will roll over and spike into a into a low. Solana ETH is looking a little bit weak. And I'm just waiting to see if we get a hold up here. See if we can get some support in the market at around the uh, 0.009 or 0.01. That's the area that I'm looking for for Solana Ethereum. That's a look at the cryptocurrencies that I'm interested in at this stage in the market. As I said, ETH is still looking pretty good. ADA is tearing a new one. DOT is doing very well. Solana is on the decline, but these are the stages where it might be an idea just to start researching them because they're not screaming ahead just yet. And when they start pumping, that's where people freak out and they FOMO in because they haven't understood what the hell they're doing. These are the times to be looking into the market and just starting to get a feel for it. Bitcoin is still in its safe zone and while it stays in there, I think we're going to see more gains flow over into the alts. Just be prepared if they shoot up, have it in your plan, do a plan, get some Bitcoin, stack those sats. Don't be a fool and watch it run up, then watch it run all the way back down because you're hoping to get more. Don't be greedy. Remember what they say. All right, guys. Appreciate you following on the crypto journey here and uh, I love hearing your comments about how you're learning how to trade, the charts that you're learning to read, the profits that you're making. So shoot them in the comments. I do read the comments even if I don't get back to you. There's a hell of a lot going on at the moment. Uh, apologies about the sound if it's still a bit crappy. I just moved into this place. So uh, yeah, look, I'm trying to fix it up and I'm looking for sound proofing guys because the vibration here is absolutely crazy it's driving me mad let me know if you enjoyed that video hitting the, the like button down below subscribe to the channel bell notification icon twitter for news updates it's uh, instagram for q and a's and my portfolio update i'll catch you guys at the next video until then have more fun to get more done <laughs>